Um, the second thing that you need to do is intertwine politics in your daily work. And so this is the part about doing your work differently, not doing more work. Now, in my family, um, I was raised in a military family, conservative, Mormon. So uh, this was a big change for my family for me to become a union girl and to become a Democrat. You know, that was like they're a little, they still think I'm a little weird sometimes. But So my mother had to invoke this rule when we got together for family gatherings because some of my family members had issues with me that we couldn't talk about politics. Well, so that got to be kind of hard because, you know, everything is about politics. The water, uh, I wrote, wrote a list, rules of the road, schools, climate. At one point we said, well, well, we could talk about sports, but then one of us started talking about steroids and baseball. And, you know, so then that was political. So then my mom had to invoke a new rule, which was the, the rule that you would declare uh, the right to disagree at any time that it got awkward and we'd have to change the subject and that that rule works pretty good for us and I say that in silliness but in reality it's really true and what we don't do and I think probably Canada is the same as the US is we don't help people to understand that everything is political <laughs> and so when I was an organizer and I was you know working on my strategic plan for my hospitals. I did internal organizing and external organizing. I used to say, I mean, I'm political. I used to say to myself, huh, is there a political issue in, in this thing that I'm working on? And sometimes I'd say yes, and sometimes I'd say no. And so what I would say to you is we have to change that. It's not, is there a political issue? It's what is the political issue in this grievance or in this bargaining or in this staffing shortage or in this safety problem? What is the political issue? And we have to engage that political issue in our everyday work that we're already doing. Um, another really important thing is to meet your members where they're at. You know, if those nurses that had come up to me uh, to invite me to the meeting, if I, you know, when I said, well, you know, they never found Jimmy Hoffa, if they had said, well, we can tell you're against the union, you know, if they had said something like that, I may, n I wouldn't be here today probably, because I would have said, well, they're rude. But you know, you really have to meet people where they're at. And all of you who have, especially the organizers and the business reps, you know, in your membership, there are people that like politics. Well, you know what? Those are probably going to be the first people you're going to ask to sign up on the card <laughs> because they already, you know, are there. And you sort of build on, it's sort of like when you're, you know, trying to organize. You start with the ones first, the ones and the twos, and then you work up the way. And, you know, one thing I found as an organizer is um, one of the best times to get people to uh, get onto the, we call it COPE, is uh, when you're ratifying a contract because when you're ratifying a contract everybody's getting a raise and so you can say well you know we got this raise but we need to change this law remember that problem with that law we had in that in that bargaining we couldn't change it because of the law well we need to influence the law and we need you to do this and so that's a really good time another really good time is when you have some kind of success that's a political success when you take members to go visit elected leaders you say you know if you go to visit elected leaders and they're like lukewarm or you know not very helpful at all you say to the folks well you know we really got to move our political program we got to change that and you get them to sign up on the on the card if they're really with you you say well guys we got to really you know get these folks we got to give them support make sure they stay in office we need to you know put our money where our mouth is so either way no matter how your visit goes when you're engaging people in politics you just sort of you sort of build on that I know that if you guys do those two things, intertwine your politics in your everyday work that you're already doing now, and you build relationships with elected officials at all levels, I, I know that it'll work. Now I'm asking you to have faith and I'm asking you to believe it, but I know it because it works. <laughs> it worked for me. I wouldn't be here today talking to you if it hadn't. And it won't take you 25 years for success. In 2000, I only won my election by 225 votes. That was less than a tenth of a percent. But we have gained, I meant 2004, not 2000. I lost in 2000. Um, I hate losing. Um, 
We, but by 2005, we had um, gained enough power and influence to really change what was happening in our state legislature. One day in 2005, I was sitting in the room and we were talking about a controversial issue. I don't remember what it was at the time. But one of the leaders of my party said, well, what does SEIU think about this? I about, I about like fell over because you know it wasn't that long ago in 2000 at the international convention we were having the new strength unity plan and we were gonna like hold politicians accountable and here I was sitting in the room and the speaker of their house said what does SEIU think about that it was I, I can't tell you I, I, I mean I did end up telling them what SEIU thought about that but it was just really mind-blowing to me that in that short a time we could have that huge of a difference. Um, you know, in the United States and in our state, in Washington State, um, SEIU has really led the way. Um, we have in Washington State now many other labor unions that work with us on our political action program. We have, do you have UFCW here? You know, we have UFCW, we have the Teamsters, we, you know, we're not affiliated with the AFL-CIO anymore, but we work very closely with them and we, uh, we organize it. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. We're, I'm in a room of friends. If it wasn't for SEIU, we wouldn't be having these successes that we've had because we have led the way. So in some ways, you're, you won't just be leading the way for your members and the people that you really care about, but you'll be you know, really changing um, politics for your whole country and for every working person, whether they're union or not. And I think that's what we want to do, right? That's what I want to do. Um, Some of the successes that we've had, we've increased, it just, just since I've been there, we've increased our state minimum wage to the highest in the country. We have increased our unemployment benefits. We made manual lifting at hospitals a thing of the past. By 2010, we have to have all non-manual lifting in our hospitals. Um, we've improved workers' compensation benefits and school funding. We've established, established a legislative working families caucus, which our whole, it's an informal caucus, but we have 39 members in our caucus and we have an agenda and the Speaker of the House knows it and the Senate Majority Leader knows it and the Governor knows it and they know what our agenda is and we meet with them. It's just mind-boggling what we've been able to do in just a few short years. And <laughs>